Okay, before we restart flying, now that we've talked about the flight instruments, I want to spend some time talking about the flight controls. Um, the first flight control I'm going to talk about is the ailerons. Now the ailerons are on the outboard portion of the wing, and notice that they move in opposition. When one goes up, the other one goes down. And um, if I move the joystick, if you move the joystick to the left, notice the left aileron goes up and the right aileron goes down. And what this is actually doing is it's going to create more lift on your right wing than on your left wing. And so when we're in the air, then that'll make the plane roll to the left. And vice versa. If I move the aileron or the joystick to the right, the right aileron goes up and the left aileron goes down. This creates more lift on the left wing and the plane will roll to the right. Now the next flight control is the elevator and that's controlled by either pushing forward on the joystick or pulling back on the joystick. If you pull back on the joystick, notice the elevator on the back of the plane moves up. And what this is going to do is actually create negative lift on the tail or a downward lift and so that lowers the tail which raises the nose of the airplane. If you push forward on the joystick, the elevator goes down and the curved surface then creates an upward lift which raises the tail and the nose will then descend. Now the last flight control is the rudder and the rudder controls yaw of the plane. If you imagine a pole going from the top of the plane all the way to the bottom um, the plane, the rudder controls the twist around that pole and this is also controlled by the twist grip on your joystick. So if you twist the joystick to the left, the rudder moves to the left. If you twist the joystick to the right, the rudder moves right. Now one thing I also want you to see is that when you move the joystick, or twist the joystick left or right, the nose wheel actually turns as well. And this is the same in an airplane. The rudder pedals will move the rudder, but they also control the nose wheel steering. So when we're on the ground, you actually do not taxi with the yoke. You taxi with the rudder pedals. Pushing the rudder right, the plane will turn to the right. Pushing the rudder left, the plane will turn to the left. We're not going to use the ailerons. So on the ground, just the feet. Or the twist grip on your Okay, now as we get going here, um, whenever you're ready, we're going to release the brakes and add full power and just use the rudder or the twist grip on your joystick to keep the plane on the center line. Uh, now the key here is to make small corrections. It's pretty easy to overcorrect. Just make nice and small corrections and you want the center line to be sitting right where you are. Basically, you're sitting right on the center line. Once your airspeed reaches 60 knots, you're going to smoothly pull back on the joystick. Careful not to pull back too much. It's extra sensitive in the simulator. You'll find that out pretty soon. But pull back and you'll lift off the ground. Now as we climb out, what I want you to do is, first of all, watch the video, then go back into Flight Simulator and practice what we've done. Now right now, my airspeed is indicating that I'm at about 85 knots. Now I'm going to I'm going to actually uh, climb out at 70 knots, and this is what I want you to practice. So I'm at 80 knots, that means I need to actually pitch up to slow down. I want to hold full power in there, but I'm still going to, and I'm going to use the pitch of the airplane pulling back and pushing forward on the joystick to control the airspeed. Now notice, if you pull back too much, the airspeed is going to slow down too much. Slow down to about 55 knots there. So the key here is not to chase it. Don't try and chase the airspeed. You want to find an attitude. Find a, a nose pitch up attitude that will hold you. So if you look at the attitude indicator in the center of the plane, you'll notice that the point of the triangle is basically resting on the first black line. That's the five degree mark. So I'm pitched up to five degrees, give or take, and that's holding me more or less on 70 knots. So as you climb out, keep the power in full and just practice using the pitch, pulling back on the joystick, pushing forward to find an attitude where you'll hold a desired airspeed. Once you can hold 70, you can practice again and try and hold maybe 75 knots or try and hold 80 knots. 
and just play around with it. I'm going to climb up to an altitude of 2,500 feet and then we're going to level off and I'll talk a little bit about straight and level flight and climbs, turns, descents and climbing and descending turns. Now, I actually want to level off a little bit before I reach 2,500. I'm going to use about 50 feet beforehand. So right here, we want to start pushing forward on the joystick, just nice and easy. And like I said, you'll find that the pitch is pretty sensitive in the simulator. Um, but we level off. There's 2,500 feet. Now, you want to let your airspeed build up a little bit. And then once you reach, let's say, 100 knots, and just bring the power back ever so slightly. And this will keep us at an, at an airspeed of 100, 110 knots. Now, I'm going to actually turn over to a heading of east. When you're flying uh, in the flight simulator and even in a real airplane for a while, you're just going to be using north, south, east, west. Just keep it simple, make it easy on yourself. So a little bit of a left turn there. There's a heading of east. Roll out, go back to straight and level flight. Straight and level flight means that I'm holding a constant heading and a constant altitude. And there's two ways to do this. You can be holding your heading and your altitude by looking 100% inside, or you can look outside. And actually, you need to use a little bit of both. But most of your attention should be actually outside the airplane. Now, if you look at the horizon line and then look at the dashboard, you'll see that the dashboard of the plane is resting uh, about an inch underneath the horizon line. And you'll notice right here that it's parallel. It's not The horizon's not tilted. So you want the dashboard to be parallel to the horizon and resting about an inch underneath of it. And then from there, all you have to do is make small corrections. If you look inside, at the altimeter, you'll see that we're a little high, so we actually need to push forward and put the dashboard a little bit farther underneath the horizon line and descend back to our original altitude of 2,500 feet. The next thing I'm going to show you is a level turn. Uh, we're going to maintain 2,500 feet, and I'm going to turn left to heading of west. Now, one thing that's different about an airplane than a car is in a car you have to keep holding the steering wheel turn the whole time. Notice here as we turn, once the plane is banked, the joystick or the yoke comes right back to center and it just stays there. Also notice, as soon as I rolled in, if you look at the vertical speed indicator and the altimeter, it's showing that we're descending. And what's happening is that we've lost vertical lift because we banked the plane. So some of our lift is being directed to the side now instead of straight up. So we need to pull back on the joystick to maintain altitude. Now as we come up on west, we actually want to start rolling out about 10 degrees prior to reaching there. Um, it'll take a little more the steeper the bank angle you're in, but for a 30 degree bank, about 10 degrees is fine. So right here we'll start rolling out, come back, wings level on a heading of west. Okay, I'm going to turn right back to a heading of north and I want to show you the different angles of bank that we can use. Look at the attitude indicator. At the very top of the attitude indicator there's a small white triangle and right now the white triangle is pointing to the white line in the center and that's zero degrees of bank. As I roll into a bank, that first line, that's ten degrees of bank. Second line is twenty degrees of bank and the last line is 30 degrees of bank. Um, usually we use 20 to 30 degrees of bank um, in a normal turn. Now as we come up to our heading of north, remember to roll out 10 degrees before you're heading. And I lost a little bit of altitude, so I need to reestablish myself, climb a little bit, get back on 2,500 feet, and on a heading of north. It's important not to rush these maneuvers. Just take your time. If you get off your altitude or get off your heading, just fix it. Take your time. Don't rush it. Next thing I'm going to be doing is a climbing left turn to a heading of west and up to 3,000 feet. 
Now for any of these maneuvers, especially the climbing maneuvers, you want to add full power anytime you're going to fully anytime you're going to climb. So we add full power, start turning and pull back on the yoke to pitch up. Again, maybe just pitch up to about 5 degrees on the attitude indicator to establish your climb and we're going to turn and climb. Now, you're probably going to reach west before you reach your altitude. In which case, just roll out of the bank first, but keep the nose pitched up so that you keep climbing, and vice versa. If you were to reach your altitude before you reached your heading, then you would uh, level off at your altitude, but keep the bank in there so that you keep turning. And 50 feet before my altitude, gently push forward on the joystick, bring it back to 3,000 feet, and a heading of west. Okay, once you're at 3,000 feet and you've leveled off, let your airspeed build for a couple seconds, and then reduce your power back to your cruise setting. I'm using about 2,200 RPM. That's working out pretty good for uh, the simulator. The next thing I'm going to be showing you is a climbing right turn. I'm going to go up to 3,500 feet and turn right to a heading of east. So it's a 180 degree turn, but only climbing 500 feet. So in this case, I'm most likely going to reach 3,500 feet before I reach my heading of east. So remember, we'll roll in, use about a 20-25 degree bank, pitch up, hold about 5 degrees of pitch up on the attitude indicator, and start climbing. As I'm climbing here, I'm just looking for 3,500 feet and for my heading of east. There's 3,400, and remember 50 feet before, start leveling off but we haven't reached east, so we need to keep the bank angle in there. So I lower the nose slightly, but keep the bank angle in there until I reach my heading of east. And 10 degrees before east, roll out, get established back in straight and level flight, let the airspeed build, and don't forget to reduce your power. The last thing I'm going to be showing you is a descending turn. I'm going to descend down to 3,000 feet and turn left to a heading of north. So for the descent, we need to reduce power, and how much is really up to you and up to how fast you want to descend. I'm going to use about 1,900 RPM and roll into my bank. Just let the nose drop lower than the horizon and start a nice descent. As I come up on my heading of north, start rolling out and keep the nose pitched down below the horizon since we haven't reached 3,000 feet yet and we still need to keep descending. So now we're just in a straight descent, waiting for our altitude. Remember, 50 feet beforehand, right here. Come back, pull back on the joystick back to 3,000 feet, and you also want to add your power back into your cruise setting of about eh, 2,200 RPM. Now that you've watched me do all these maneuvers, I want you to open up Microsoft Flight Sim, X-Plane, or whatever simulator program you're using, and I want you to practice all these maneuvers. I've included a task list in the included ebook for what I want you to do in Flight Sim. Straight and level flight, climbs, turns, and descents. I want you to practice until you can hold your altitudes within 100 feet of that desired and hold your headings within 10 degrees of that desired. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and don't forget to keep checking out our website at flighttrajectory.com for more information, new products, updates, etc. Happy flying!